Hello everybody, welcome back to the Gregorius Mass video. In this video, which is Theorem of the Week, of course it was meant to be uploaded yesterday, but such is the way of life. Um, you know, the most important thing is not that it's uploaded on a Sunday, but that we learn mathematics. So, okay. Um, theorem of the Week for last week, but uploaded today is Brouwer's Fixed Point Theorem, which is maybe a bit overdue, considering I've done the Harry Ball Theorem, and I've done, I think, maybe one or two fixed other Fixed Point Theorems, and I've done a proof using degrees. So, it just seems right that I should do Brouwer's Fixed Point Theorem. Now, there were two ways that I could have proved this, which probably would have been more mematically relevant, if, I, if you allow me to use a made-up word there. And that could have been with using the Harry Ball Theorem and with Degree Theory, both of which have been featured earlier in this series. However, I've decided to use the more elegant, in my opinion, my humble opinion, proof. And, um, okay, I'll, show, I'll present that to you guys now. Um, and good news is, there will be a draw. So, proof. So, I forgot to say what it was. Brouwer's fixed point theorem says that any continuous map from the end disk to itself must have a fixed point. So if you want an intuitive explanation of this, if you have a bunch of sugar, you pour it um, into a cup of tea, you stir it, there will always be one bit of sugar that is not moving. And of course it's a bit unintuitive because when you look at that bit of sugar it's moving and then you look at the point that was fixed a second ago and it starts moving but then this one is fixed but all it, at least one of them will be fixed assuming that your cup is a perfect disc and so on and so forth but when you stir it i think that's exactly actually <laughs> amusingly i think that's how brower actually formulate the uh, thought of this theorem originally um is that he was stirring his cup of sugar and he realized wait there's always one bit that's fixed and uh, I'm going to prove it mathematically. So, let me draw you a uh, disc. Because this is going to be a key part of the proof. Now, we're going to assume that such an F does exist. That is, for all X, if X is here, then F of X is somewhere else. So let's say here. Now, what we can do is we can get a different colour for emphasis, and we can draw a ray from f of x to x. Whoops, you did. Let me try and make this a little, at least a little bit straight. Okay, it didn't really cross through x, but you know what I'm trying to do. I'll put x here, just to make it a bit more satisfactory. Okay, cool. So, right, now. There it is, there it is, right there. Okay, good. Now, the point is that it crosses through the sphere. So the, because the boundary of the disk is the sphere, so the boundary of the n disk is the n minus one sphere, so the boundary of the two disk is obviously the one sphere, i.e. the circle. And it will, this ray will always cross at one point. And so what we will do is we'll define a function and um, we'll call it capital F, and this takes us from the disk to the n minus 1 sphere. And what it does to x is it maps it to the point on the n minus 1 sphere where the ray intersects it. I'll just call it ray intersects. It maps x to this point here. So you look at x. Where's f of x? Well, it's not there because f has no fixed point. It's over here. You draw the ray. Boom, it crosses there. That is the point to which x, our original x maps. Okay, hopefully that makes sense. Now, this map f is actually a retraction. And the crux of this theorem is to show that there cannot be a retraction from the n-disc to the n-minus-1 sphere. So, let's do this. So, 
What it, firstly, what is a retraction? Well, a retraction, if we have f from just some x to a, where x is the topological space and a is a subspace, like we have here, such that a, sorry, uh, yeah, a maps to a. That is uh, probably written nicer. f of a equals a for all a and a. I've just said a for like five million times, but um, what it means is, let's look at our example here. When we actually look on the boundary, well, our point is going to get mapped to itself. Because if we have some x on the boundary here, x, and we have f of x here, well, the ray is obviously going to go through x. And so x will map to itself. And this is true for any point on the n minus 1 sphere. And so this condition is satisfied. So it would be a retraction. Now, retractions can be stated in a more, I don't know, category, in a more formal way as maps. If we have F, capital F, from X to A, actually I'll just use the disk, from the disk to the N minus 1 sphere, and we have the inclusion iota from the n minus 1 sphere to the disk, well then the composition f composed with iota is equal to the identity because all this is saying is that every point in S the n minus 1 sphere is mapped to the same point under f. So now what would this imply? Well, this would imply that um, we can construct, let's say, a sequence of maps, which looks like the following. So we go from the end disk, we go via, um, sorry, we don't start there. We start at the n minus one sphere. Then we include ourselves into the N disk, and then we go back to S N minus one via F, and this is uh, the inclusion. And this map right here, this map right here, is the identity. Now, I will show that the existence of such an F cannot exist, which would then prove that there cannot be a retraction. And therefore, this map f cannot exist, and therefore, we cannot construct such rays for all x, and therefore, there must be at least one fixed point. Because our, the assumption that we can draw such a ray for every x is equivalent to the assumption that there is no fixed point. So let me first show that there cannot be such an f. Well, the solution here is to take homology. So... This sequence of maps would imply that we can also have a sequence of maps like this. So if we take the n minus 1 homology at each um, um, component, I guess I, you could call it, like so. And then if we go to the s n minus 1 via f. We go here via the identity. Well, sorry, this should be the homology. Well, unfortunately for us, or sorry, fortunately, I guess, this is the integers. But this is trivial. So the n minus 1 homology of the n disk is trivial. Because if you think about it, where, where, where on earth are you going to find um, a one-dimensional hole in the circle if the hole is filled in, which is literally what the disk is? So, and, and in the same way, where on earth are you going to find an n-1 dimensional hole on the end disk if the hole is filled in, which is literally what the end disk is? So that makes intuitive sense that it would be uh, trivial. So this is zero. And this is the um, induced map under the inclusion. 
and this then goes via the induced map under f back to the integers and this i believe would just be the identity but the point is it's a non-zero map so i'll just call it the map induced by the identity but what do we know about a map factoring through zero that's not possible we cannot factor a map through zero like this. It just does not work. And therefore, the existence of such an f is not possible. And therefore, let's just go backwards, the existence of such an f is not possible. And so, the existence of this map here is not possible. What does that mean? We cannot always draw a ray like this from f of x to x. And that would mean that there must be at least one point where f of x equals x, so let's say at this point here, x equals f of x, and that would mean, well, look, we can't draw a ray, and so this is not a retraction. Um, but, unfortunate, uh, but, you know, that would then just agree with the theorem, so, you know. The false assumption we've made here is that Brouwer's fixed point theorem is correct, and so by contradiction we have proven Brouwer's fixed point theorem. And that is theorem of the week. So, yes, uh, thank you guys very much for watching. Um, I hope you enjoyed this video. There's all sorts of interesting stuff about Brouwer's fixed point theorem. I hope you enjoyed this sugar in the cup analogy. That was straight from Wikipedia. Um, but I do actually enjoy that analogy. It's somewhat similar to the Harry Ball theorem analogy, you know. Um, but there's also some stuff in economics, I, I believe. Um, so for some reason, Brouwer's fixed point theorem occurs in economics, which is kind of interesting. Um, but yeah, it's quite interesting. Uh, here's the proof. And uh, so now you can look it up without wondering, oh, I wonder why this is true. So, um, yeah, uh, I'm off. Uh, goodbye.